uh, today as i said uh, we will cover a topic called sampling distribution okay this is uh, one of the you can call it as a basic a ba- and foundational concept for all the advanced statistics okay all the question of why do we have the advanced statistics like hypothesis testing and confidence intervals all these sort of things uh, will be answered in understanding this particular concept and also uh, we'll also cover alongside sampling distribution like how to so far we have been uh, discussing what what a sample is what are sampling uh, biases uh, how do we uh, uh, what are the precautionary steps or measures we need to take while taking a sample out of a population so to avoid sampling bias and etc we have seen all these things now today we'll understand <clears throat> from these samples that we have taken how do we estimate the unknown population parameters like population mean population variance etc how do we estimate those so we'll try and cover uh, uh, a little bit of these topics today so <clears throat> first let's understand uh, uh, before actually before dwelling into uh, sampling distribution we'll understand some or in fact recollect some of the basic uh, uh, known concepts okay or terms okay uh, first of them is sample statistic we all know what a sample is and we all know what a statistic is so it's so a mean median mode uh, standard deviations if we are if, if those metrics are referring to a sample the data set we call them as statistics if they are referring to population we call them as parameters so a sample statistic could be any of those examples that was given there and the other term is population distribution so we all know what a data distribution is okay um data distribution is just nothing but if you are trying to what is the frequency distribution of the data itself so for example uh if we have uh anything so the marks of a student right in the in the classroom what is the distribution uh, so <clears throat> if the distribution is referring to a population data it's called population distribution and otherwise if it's a dis- the distribution is referring to a sample data then we just call it either a sample distribution or a, a, a more generally data distribution so these are the few terms that we need to understand and here you need to keep in mind that sampling distribution is not a uh, 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 any uh, similar is not same as either the population distribution or the data distribution okay now we know these terms let's well into understanding what the sample distribution sampling distribution itself is okay first let's see the definition <clears throat> uh, i would recommend uh, uh, everyone would read through it Uh, the sampling distribution of a statistic it could be any statistic mean variance etc is the probability distribution that specifies the probabilities for the possible values of a statistic can take okay too uh, too much uh, to understand from that it's going to very confusing but we'll <coughs> try and understand in our own terms okay and then we'll come back to the definition okay so far we have seen population data right and we have let's take for example you took some samples of data from this population sample 1 and sample 2 right and each of these sample will have its own statistics mean 1 mean 2 uh, for both the samples right now imagine you take inst- instead of two samples you have took 10 samples okay then you have 10 means instead of 10 samples you have took 100 samples from the population data now you have 100 means now you can plot all of these 100 means on a distribution plot frequency distribution right so hey obviously of these 100 means some of the means will be more frequent and some of the means will be less frequent means some of them will be more repetitive and some of them will be less repetitive and this frequency distribution of these means is what we call a sampling distribution okay sampling distribution to be precise sampling distribution of means okay now this is exactly what it would look like so on the x axis we have means of each sample okay and uh, we are distributing all the 100 uh, it's it's taken example of all the 100 means how they are uh, falling into uh, basically we are distributing the means uh, on this mean x mean scale and we can see that 
the mean this itself is a distribution that's why we call it a uh, distribution and give it a name called sampling distribution now if if at all some of you find the definition is confusing you can read it again it will be uh, 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 easy now to understand okay now this itself is a distribution okay we have a population distribution we have a sample data distribution and for we took some samples and we got ourselves a new distribution we called it a sampling distribution and since it's it itself is a distribution we will have a parameters that define a distribution for this distribution as well so for example what are the parameters that define a distribution we have measures of center mean median mode and uh, measures of variance standard deviation or variance range etc so this sampling distribution will also have similar properties as a similar uh, measures so we have uh, the mean here for this particular distribution of means and uh, uh, we, we can call it as mean of means and let's represent it as mu x for the time being okay mu x represents the mean of the sampling distribution of means and likewise we have a standard deviation of the sampling distribution which uh, takes into account the variability of the uh, um, of the mean okay how the means are spread across from the mean of means so that's what this particular standard deviation will uh, tell so I, I just want to make sure that we understand this these two points uh, uh, are very clear uh, it, it, it's i know it's slightly confusing if at all uh, there needs to be any explanation you can let me know uh, are we all clear on this understanding what uh, sampling distribution is and what this mu x is representing and what the sigma x is representing just english awesome okay great so that's what it means and let's come back to sampling distribution in a bit and explore it in depth but first first we'll understand why it's important why uh, sampling distribution is uh, needed in the first place okay it will as as you know we can take sample from uh, multiple samples from the population and uh, if we only consider that sample that we have taken to study it could vary from the some other sample that some other person has taken to study for himself or herself right so this particular concept will help us explain what could be the variability from a sample to sample and it's important to understand the difference between that occurs between a sample to sample to estimate what could be the actual population parameter so it's important to cover that variability that happens from sample to sample to be able to estimate the actual population parameter we will see how it is uh, how it covers so, yeah the distribution itself it covers right so for example the mean of the means mu x let's call it as phi here since it's a perfect normal distribution and we the standard deviation let's say for example here it will tell us the variability so the mean is phi mean of means is phi if the standard deviation is for example 1 that means it tells me that hey there is a 66% chance will come to that 66% in a minute how i got there there is a 66% uh, uh chance that your uh you take any sample that your mean will lie uh, uh within the radius of 4 to 6 if our standard deviation is assumed to be 1 okay so phi which is my mean 5 plus 1 6 5 minus 1 4 so there is a 66% chance we will come to that 66 in a minute so that's that's how the variability can be explained and the second thing is it will also help us understand how close a actual uh, uh our estimate is how, clo- how how close it is to the population uh, parameter so obviously we don't know the uh population parameters mean or uh, variance we are only estimating them so but it, when we are estimating them it could be any rough estimate as well so the error is could be small error could be high so it's important for us to know hey if i am estimating and giving a number for the population parameter i need to know how how much of that estimation is correct how confident am i with that estimation how much can i trust that estimation so that is something this uh, the other point that this sampling distribution 
will help us with we'll see both these points in detail but the, the, to to give you a brief those are the few things okay now that we understood what a sampling distribution what it can be used for let's try and estimate uh, uh let's try and jump to the estimations part okay how do we estimate the population parameters uh mean and standard deviation or variance etc there are a couple of ways we can do it okay uh, uh to estimate the population parameters one such uh one among them is estimating via a from a single sample okay uh let me be clear this is the one among the ways that we can estimate the population parameters imagine for sampling distribution we had to take multiple samples not single sample but here in this way we only need a single sample if we have only one sample how do we estimate the population parameters so uh, look at the graph on the right side and uh, you can see that the it's, it's telling that the the bigger curve is the population distribution and the smaller curve is representing the sample distribution okay now let's say if we if we want to estimate uh ignore the text for the time being we'll come to that uh if we want to estimate the mean okay from you can see that sample and population distributions their center is almost same since they are almost like perfectly normal distribution they will tend to have a same mean the sample the mean of the sample will be same as the mean of the population like the, the, i mean it will not be exactly same it there will be very close to each other that that's what it's trying to tell us the sample and the population they are very similar in nature so the means will be almost approximately close to each other they will not be exactly same slight difference could be there but they we can approximate it since it's that's why it's called estimate it's a, it's not an accurate number it's just an estimate and this is the best estimate that we can take if you have a single sample and you want to estimate the population mean just take the mean of the uh, sample and uh, estimate it as population mean so that's what we call so the hats whatever the symbols that we see here they are the estimate estimates and we estimate uh, we keep that as a population estimate now talking about the variance okay remember recollect that the variance is a uh, measure of uh, the spread of the distribution on the x axis and if you notice the two graphs i mean two curves population and sample the spread is smaller for the sample and the spread is higher for the population right so obviously in this sample you are if you take the variance just like how you estimated the uh, sample mean as your estimate for population you can't similarly do the same for variance as well because you can clearly see that your variance in your sample is smaller than your variance in the population right so if you take it bo both of them as equal you are just uh, 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 in involving an error there known error okay so our estimate could be a little more better so let me actually now uh, how, how do we estimate the sample variance i'm sorry population variance from the sample variance okay first of all let's assume that you have entire data of the population okay let's if if your population if you are able to collect the entire data of the population how would you calculate the variance using this particular formula right so here the mu is the population mean x is the each individual observation and n is the size of the population you just uh, uh, take a sigma of all the differences of each and every observation from the mean you square it i'm sorry you take the uh, difference square it and then summation and divide it by the sum size of the population that will give you the population variance okay that's well and good uh, but if i use the same concept same formula to calculate the sample variance i will get the variance for the sample but i can't estimate it to be population variance just because of the fact that i am underestimating the population uh, uh, i'll be underestimating the population variance so just to account for that particular factor uh, what they have done is in order to estimate the population variance they've come up with a slightly modified formula okay 
what they did is in the denominator instead of dividing by the size of the sample they divided by size of the sample minus one and why is that obviously if you divide by a lesser number your number actual number will be slightly higher and to account for uh, this uh, slight uh, lower variance in the sample compared to the population uh, variance uh, uh, this particular uh, factor has been introduced so there is uh, nothing more uh, 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 no derivation or uh, anything related to it you can just take that as a nt2 explanation why we have to divide by n minus 1 and if at all if you come across any uh, variance formula symbol formulas in any statistical packet software or excel you will find two formulas okay one for population and one for sample both the variance in uh, standard divisions so then this is the difference so if you are considering the data that you have is the entire data population data uh, then you have to go for a population formula that will be using this particular it will divide by n if you know that if your data has own it's only a sample of the data then you should go by the sample variance formula or function then that will make use of this particular uh, fu function so this is how if you have a single sample and you have to estimate the population parameters this is how we will estimate you'll just take the sample mean and estimate it as population mean and you take uh, uh, sample uh, you just calculate the variance of the sample but just instead of dividing by n you divide by n minus 1 to get the estimate of population variance so this is when you have a single sample but normally at times you might have a, uh, a flexibility to collect more than one sample okay and in that case where uh, we have more than one samples uh, this is how you can estimate the population parameters okay uh, let's call your population parameters of mu and sigma and then you make use of sampling distribution okay you get the for all the samples that you are able to collect you you create a sampling distribution okay just like the one that we saw here you create a sampling distribution and for the sampling distribution you calculate what it's mu x what is the mean of the sampling distribution and sigma of the sampling distribution and from those parameters you estimate your mean of the population as same so your population will be exactly same because of the uh, same uh, similar explanation you can give uh, because of this uh, sample will always uh, kind of represent the population in somehow so it can give you the same explanation here as well but whereas the variance uh, there is a slight difference here so you have to this is the uh, sigma x is the uh, variance of your sampling distribution and sigma is the population variance so your population variance is derived by multiplying the n with the sampling distribution uh, variance n is nothing but the sample size so how many data points do you have in your sample so and we know that standard deviation is just the square root of a variance so it will uh, the same formula Will, will 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 take a square root and will get the estimation of standard deviation these formulas normally there are uh, derivations for it how they can be derived you can uh, easily find them in any uh, statistics textbook will not go through them uh, how these are these formulas are derived but these estimates are very accurate and will validate the accuracy of these formulas uh, uh, in a, uh, by going into some sort of a sampling distribution simulation okay so if remember these formulas uh, just for a minute or so so mean of the population can be approximated as the mean of the sampling distribution itself whereas mean of the population uh, i'm sorry variance of the population can be uh, approximated as variance of your sampling distribution multiplied by the size of the sampling uh, size of the sample okay now let's quickly get here so what i have here is a, a, a simulation environment for sampling distributions let me explain the terms that are involved in here okay so we have on the top the graph that you see is the population distribution distribution of a uh, population data and uh, we have few numbers over here Okay, we'll come to that in a minute and we have uh, 
two graphs here which we can plot for what statistic do we want to plot the sampling distribution so first i will choose uh, let me choose here just for the mean okay i'm plotting i'm trying to get the sampling distribution for mean and i, I can select this particular n refers to the sample size for each sample that you want to take what should be the sample size i can specify it from 2 to 25 for the time being else i'll set, select 25 okay and these numbers here they represent how many samples do you want to take okay don't confuse between these two numbers this number represents sample size how many sample this number represents how many sample and what normally happens is so this is what will happen so i asked for it to take a sample of 25 okay uh, size sample size of 25 and i uh, it'll it's it'll take 25 data points like that and it will take what is the mean of that right so this is for one sample and if i take the same same thing if for multiple samples let's say for five samples i get five points here one point for each sample and if you keep into if i keep taking more and more samples my uh, sampling distribution for the means is popping up right uh, uh, is, is being de developed so let's take for example some 10000 samples and my I, I, my sampling distribution is more or less fixed now uh, it will not change more drastically change with the number of distributions and if you see here the mean of the sampling distribution this particular 16 is the mean of the means number that we saw and it's and let's compare that with the population mean it's exactly matching with the population mean right so that that's what our formula is we'll estimate the population mean by mean of the means and if we take variance okay for example variance is nothing but square of standard deviation uh, uh, what is our formula here here the variance for standard deviation uh, for this population data is 25 right 25 in fact let's just calculate for standard deviation uh, uh, here our standard deviation is something like 1.04 and uh, our estimate is standard deviation of your sampling distribution into samples square root of sample size right so our sample size is 25 square root of 25 is 5 and i multiply that with 1 almost like 5 and i get a good approximate for my population standard deviation so this is the uh, uh validation of the formulas that we just saw so now there are a couple of very interesting properties for this particular sampling distribution which can be explained using the same simulation we'll, we'll, we'll see what they are so okay now instead of now the validation is part is done now instead of selecting the sample size as 25 let's compare uh, sample size of 2 okay and let's take a mean again in the second graph and compare that to the sample size is 25 okay and now let me take five samples first okay my five points for both the cases and let me add five more samples five more samples if you if you notice one thing as i keep adding more and more samples my sampling distribution where my sampling size is equal to 2 is come uh, is 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 popping up like this like this and my sampling distribution where my sample size is equal to 20 is popping up something like this both are derived from the same population right but if you try to observe one if you obviously we can see visually a lot of difference is there between those two and that difference is normally termed as uh, or what, what they what they say is that when your sample size is higher the distribution that you get is more normal so okay this is normally uh, this the, the, the distribution on the bottom is considered to be more uh, 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 similar to normal than the distribution in the top this particular one so and this particular observation is what we call as central limit theorem uh, in uh, in statistics so as your sample size increases your uh, sampling distribution tends to be more and more inclined towards a perfect normal distribution and we can uh, yeah, same same thing we can observe so that that's what we call a, a, a central limit theorem okay that's one observation keep that in mind and second important property is it is not just uh, this particular normal distribution property that sampling distribution will always incline itself to a normal distribution it doesn't happen only because 
my population data is itself a normal distribution my population data could be of any distribution any random distribution L- let me change that okay at the moment it, uh, my population is normal let me change that to some skewed distribution okay now it's not normal uh, and but let me take again some 10000 samples and you can see that my uh, when my sample size is higher my population uh, distribution i'm sorry the sampling distribution is perfectly normal whereas my when my sample size is low it's not perfectly normal it's kind of skewed right so that's why it's 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 again central limit theorem kicking in here so it could be uh, some custom uniform distribution as well here in even in this case uh, if i take 10000 samples both of them are normal here right so irrespective of even i can give some random distribution myself okay any whatever the distribution could be and if i take this it will always occur to be the normal distribution and this is the important observation this is the second part of the central limit theorem so what let's go back to our presentation uh is this clear here any everyone so there are two points that if my sample size increases my uh distribution will sampling distribution will tend to be more and more perfect and uh, normal and uh, irrespective of what the parent distribution is so that's entirely what a, a central limit theorem means so let's go back right <coughs> so it's a, a same explanation on the visually on the right side here as my sample size increases sample distribution of the sample statistic approaches a normal distribution and if you would notice uh after in the simulation we have only have uh, n is equal to up, up until 25 right not not any number after that reason being at uh, n is equal to 30 it will take a perfect normal distribution and no matter how much you increase n after 30 your distribution will not change so much so that's why at max uh if you have a sample size of n is equal to 30 which is a decent uh, number to achieve uh you can um, always attain this particular uh uh normal distribution and why this particular important uh, observation is important because this is uh, on this basis on this particular point itself we will make all the uh, 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 uh estimations more and more accurate so let's say for example so far we have only seen estimates of a uh, parameter uh, estimates of the population parameters like mean and median as a point estimates what do i mean by that so all these formulas either from sampling distribution or from a single sample the number that you get is a single number right so for the sample uh, for the variance it's a point single point estimates that's why we call them point estimates but whereas in the practical cases your point estimates if they are off by a certain number there is a chance that you are always wrong right so yeah, that error will always continue so in practical cases what we do is theoretically if you have to plug in some numbers in a formula and all point estimates will be the right numbers but practically if you uh, if you are analyzing some business data and making some decisions out of it point estimates may not be the right number uh, because uh, if one your estimate itself uh, that estimate is offset uh, you will, you are carrying that offset all along your analysis throughout your analysis so for practical purpose what they do is instead of point estimating they give a range of estimates hey okay this is my point estimate but i'll not give you this point estimate alone i'll give you a range uh, point estimate plus something point estimate minus something and that i'll call as the range of that estimate and that is where we the concept of confidence intervals kicks in okay how do we uh let me how to explain this okay remember the observation from the central limit theorem given the the good amount of sample size all your sampling distributions will be normal right now take that normal distribution of your sampling distribution and we know that few, there are certain properties of a normal distribution and what they are uh, is is represented in this slide okay there is a mean at the center and 
standard deviation is on my x axis okay so from zero from my mean if i add 0.5 standard deviation so the, uh, th this would be my range okay and from zero if i add one standard deviation this would be my range and what these percentages are meaning is that of all the data you can expect that hey if you take a let's say for this example this particular range from your point estimate of the mean if you take plus one standard deviation and minus one standard deviation range you can expect that 68 percent of the times your mean will always lie in this data right 68 percentage of the times so that's a that's what we call the confidence of that range hey i can say that with 68 percent confidence your mean will always lie in this particular range and we are able to achieve that uh, come to that confidence only because of the central limit theorem and uh, as uh, and we, uh, for the fact that all the sampling distributions will attain normal distribution if that is not happening we won't be able to uh, uh, arrive at this confidence so again if, if i want more confidence i can extend my range uh, from the point estimate and say okay instead of taking one standard deviation range i'll take two standard deviations on both sides and i'll my confidence is increased 95 percentage so if i keep my range of my population mean uh, with two standard deviations from the point estimate, I, I can be 95% sure that all my all the time my, I am correct. So that's very important for the practical purposes. And I can go ahead, uh, uh, if, I, if I can take some 3.5 standard deviations here, my uh, accuracy will all uh, will be some 99.99%. So it will always be right. So people, uh make use of this particular concept okay the which is the central limit uh property of the cent central limit theorem and the properties of the normal distribution and come up with a more and more accurate predictions for uh the population parameters mean median mode etc uh, sorry are you guys still seeing my screen yes normal distribution Okay, just yeah so the, the, uh, the, that's what it uh, I have for today guys so it's it's about uh, how to make uh, uh, estimate the population parameters from the sample parameters and this particular concept of conference intervals uh, is all will, will also be a basic ba basis for the hypothesis testing and all we will explore hypothesis testing and conference interval in the upcoming sessions if you have any doubts so far in any of the slides sampling distribution central limit theorem normal distribution properties or you can let feel free to ask them